never told you how good it feels to hold you. It isn't easy to explain. Ooh. And though I. Why do birds sing so gay? Uh, well, first of all, that song means absolutely everything to me because that was, I think, the start of my wanting to sing. Because when I was young, I always wanted to be a tap dancer or a ballet dancer. I don't think singing was actually on my mind, really, until I heard Frankie Lyman. Why do birds sing so gay? In love with my way to play to play Why do they fall in love? We didn't know how to break into this business. And uh, we, the Peppermint Lounge was very hot. And we all went to, we went to Camelucci Studio, which was like on 45th Street, so we knew exactly where the area, you know, exactly where it was. So me, my sister, my first cousin, we all dressed alike, put our hair real high, and uh, my mother said, make sure you put cigarettes, you have cigarettes in your hand when you get online, because you had to stand online to get in that place. I, my mother didn't know we smoked anyway, you know, but we didn't tell her. We were very happy to do this, you know. And uh, we stood there, and the manager came out and said, girls, you're late. And they, I said, don't say anything, we went inside, and that was, but we didn't do any singing when we first started, it was all dancing. They just said, girls, get up on stage and see what you, because we were on bars, as I said before, dancing. They said, let's, because it was three Starlighters and three Ronettes, three guys and three girls, so they said, let's see how it will look on stage. And I, I think I grabbed the mic from Joey one night, and we were just playing around, and they said, keep that in. Not only did you see older people, you saw older stars. I'm talking about, I'm standing, I will never forget one night, I'm on the banister, right, just twisting away, and in walks Charleston Heston. You know, people like that, you know. There's Edward G. Robertson sitting over there watching me dance. You know, it's freaking me out because this is what we watched in the 60s on the late show. We were watching, you know, these kind of people, on, you know. And these Ava Gardner walks, and these are the kind of things that, are, that were freaking me out as a kid. Our first first session was was a song called "Why Don't They Let Us Fall in Love," which they Phil and Jeff and L.A. everybody they just knew that was the number one record. But meanwhile, while they were I was in the studio singing that, they were in the other office writing "Be My Baby." And after I had completed "Why Don't They Let Us Fall in Love" in the studio, Phil comes screaming out of the studio, "I got a song that's gonna be number one! I know it's a smash!" And we heard our record on on um, American Bandstand almost blew me away because Dick Clark was saying this is the hottest record it's out da, da, da. And when me and my sister and my cousin were listening like this what record could they be we talk it was be my baby oh my ladies you will move out here a little bit just to have you all here let me let me jump in the middle it'll be easier and I can pass this microphone around a bit let's meet by names first of all may I have your first name Ronnie Ronnie Michelle how do you spell that? Okay. I, I feel a little, I must frankly admit, I feel a little more comfortable now than I did a moment ago. I did an interview show years and years ago where nobody spoke English, and it's extremely difficult sometimes. It's a simple question. Uh, let me start with an easy one. How long have you gals been together? About two and a half years. Are you by any chance related? Did somebody tell me they're sisters in this group? Yes. Uh, Ronnie and I are sisters here to that person. Well, it's all a family affair. <laughs> have you traveled a good deal since you put this group together? Uh, quite a bit. We've been to Bahamas and Bermuda, Hawaii. Wait a minute. Let me ask you about Bermuda and the Bahamas and, and Nassau and so forth. Did you like that? I was a four. Would you like to go back again? Wonderful. I love it. <laughs> I, I tell you, that's one of my favorite spots. It's a pretty thing. Have you made a lot of records? We made two others besides this one, yes. Did they have any success? No. <laughs> did, did you ever get discouraged along the way when this happened? No, not really. We just kept trying and you know. How, how long were they between, say, the first time you made a record and this time? It was about six months. Oh, you didn't have that long to get discouraged. <laughs> how old are you, if I may inquire? I'm 18. 18? 19. 17. The baby is here, if I can. Well, that makes it even 17, 18, 19. What does the future hold for the run at? you going to make albums, travel, or have you? Uh, well, we're going to California to make albums, and then uh, 
with a, a, a Christmas album. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait a minute. This is September, October. This is the last part of September. What are you doing? Making Christmas albums. Well, we're going to make a Christmas album. I don't know why so early, but we're going to do it. <laughs> you for this Christmas? Yeah, and then we're going to do a tour for ourselves. We're going to go, of course, to the West and everything. And then we're going to do a Dick Clark on his wonderful tour. <laughs> you know, everybody is talking about this. We've set it up for November. As long as we don't run into snow all the time. Well, have you been to California before? Yes, many times. Well, ladies, if you may, we'd like to join you at the autograph table, okay? We'll see you there. Thank you so much. The Ronettes, ladies and gentlemen. These three young ladies at the autograph table, you're going to hear a good deal of. The Ronettes with Be My Baby. This is the first of, I'm sure, many, many successful records for them because they have apparently discovered the secret sound of recorded success. play any instrument and I don't know all I did was go in the studio and Phil never re rehearsed me around anyone else it was always either at the hotel or either at you know uh, a studio no one else ever heard me sing but him he taught me everything every song from be my baby to the last song on Philly's records and what was the question <laughs> oh, God, I, the I remember, remember being in the studio with me Cher Darlene it was all of us, my sister Estelle, Nedra, all of us were in the studio. He rehearsed, he studied all of our voices. Mine, Darlene's, he couldn't stand Cher's voice, sorry Cher, but he hated her voice. I mean, certain people's voices he hated, he hated Sonny's voice, so he put tell Sonny to stand all the way in the back of the room because he needed all those voices for the sound. In those days you couldn't use 8 tracks, 16, whatever. And um, he just, my voice, after uh, my voice, he just said, this is what I've been looking for. They thought he was a genius, see, and I used to say, genius, he's mean, you know, and he's strict and he's too stern, and I was such a kid and I didn't know how to even read music, much less know this guy was a genius, but what I did know when I was in that studio, I didn't know how he got what he got out of my voice, considering I never, I never took any instrument and I never, you know, really studied singing or anything, I don't know how he got it, I don't know how I learned the song just like that. I want him. I remember doing Walking in the Rain, and uh, he, he wrote it with Barry Mann and Cynthia Wilde. It was right there in the studio, and I remember sitting there with the three of them and, and just going over it, 15, 20 minutes. Then I went and, and recorded it, and they said, that's it. I said, what do you mean that's it? I got to, you know, but I just, <clears throat> just clearing my voice good. So was very good with me. He, he, and I think he did that with a lot of the lead singers, Darlene. I think it was the musicians that he took so much time with to make them as good as if the lead singer's voice was great and he wouldn't record you if he didn't think you had a great voice, then the music and back had to be equally great. Well, see, Darlene sang and all the other Blossoms uh, sang in here. They sang background, so did Estella Ned the Ronettes. I, I never sang the background. And which was, I was very angry because when we first all got there and got in LA and everything, I was like one of the girls, me and Cher were best friends. And after that, after Phil, we had a little love affair, you know, going out together. I never sang anybody else's background, including my own. You were never in the background? 
I, I used to look through the glass when I hear them laughing and having fun. Sure. And I never sang anyone else's background. I, w I was always in, stuck in the glass because I never left Phil's side. I wasn't allowed to. And I can say that word now, you know, I couldn't say it then, but I, I wasn't allowed to go out of the studio. I could go to the ladies' room. If I remember one time, her, and I thought her papa was so cute, he still is, and he went in the coffee, that little coffee room when you took five, and I, I went in to get some coffee. Phil stopped the whole session. I mean, I just went and wanted some coffee, and then to get a close-up of Herb Albert, look at him, you know. And uh, after that, I, I wasn't even, I never went out of that. If anything, I wanted, Darlene told me the story, how, how Sonny would go out and get me comic books. I love Betty and Veronica and Archie, and, and my Pepsi Cola and my potato chips. So I never went out of the studio, and I never even went into the other part to sing background anymore. How'd you feel about uh, frustrated. At first, I, I thought, well, maybe because Phil always gave me a reason for everything um, because of my voice. He said my voice out, outstood every. I said, Phil, it's got about 20 guys in there, and, and you're going to overdub that, so that's about 40 people. You mean my voice will stick out? So he said, yeah, and I, that's all he would say, and I would say, okay. What could I do? And I loved the business so much, and I knew that was the man that was making my hit records. I wasn't complaining that much. My mother passed four years ago, and she went, she's the one that got me out of the mansion, because she asked Phil if I could take a walk. My mother said, don't wear any shoes, because you know, he won't think you're leaving if you don't have any sho you know, shoes on. So I didn't wear any shoes, and when we got pa past the gate, we start jogging out of there, and my feet were all cut up, but I didn't care, because I knew I would have died there. By this point, all Ronnie felt she could do was run, even if it meant leaving the kids behind. The money, the mansions, the Rolls Royces, and all that stuff, and the servants, I had it all, and I didn't want any of it at the end. I just wanted my freedom. Oh. Phil and Ronnie Spector had been married for four years in 1972 when she escaped her isolated life in their dark mansion. She went back to her family in New York City, leaving Phil and their three children behind and filed for divorce. All I know when Ronnie Spector left was that she left and she just never came back. It's not like I was heartbroken that I lost my mom. We started getting locked in our rooms, you know, because he felt he had to, I guess, control everything. So it's pretty interesting. I mean, I'm still going to therapy to figure out, you know, why he treated his friends better than he treated his, you know, his, his family. How involved was my father in our upbringing? Uh, he wasn't. Uh, he, he really wasn't there. The Eddie Money song, which is still an anthem. Oh, God. Just like Ronnie sang. Just huh? like Ronnie sang. So he played me this song, and he sang, uh, sang it to me over the phone. And when he's just like Ronnie sang, and he said, that's when you come in, you got to go, be my little baby. I, I said, what? I love that, because they, it was all about me. That video was great, too. And yeah, oh, you remember the video? I saw it. Yeah, it's just silhouettes of you. And I'm walking around. I know, yeah, I remember the video. I love the video. What's the rest of your
really waited long. You know, we, we went through a lot of ups and downs, but、uh, we're here, and we're <laughs> inducted into the Hall of Fame at the Waldorf. I mean, I grew up like a hundred, a hundred, a hundred blocks north of here in Spanish Harlem. We all did, and、uh, the Frankie Lymans, all those great pop voices. That's what why I got my voice from. Frankie Lymans, the students. I could go on forever. Oh, I have a speech. <laughs> <laughs> I was scared about that. I wow. I never thought I'd get here, but here I am. I am blown away. All my life, all I ever wanted to do was sing rock and roll,、uh, and now to be honored this way, it feels like like this is the way I always dreamed it would be. <laughs> okay, I got to turn the page. Uh, then all the people who, when I came back in the se- early 70s, tried to be there for me: Jimi Hendrix, my dear friend John Lennon, who introduced me to Jimmy Iovine, who got me involved with Springsteen and the E Street Band. <laughs> Love you, Springsteen, Southside Johnny, <laughs> and Miami Steve. I love you guys.、Uh, where where was I?、Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, Jimmy Iovine, who got us、uh, involved、well, with E Street Band. Okay, uh, uh, and Eddie Money, take me home tonight. I don't wanna let you go till you see the light. And to all my fans, thanks for remembering. It's been a long journey getting here, but now that I am here, let's rock! I would just like to say thank you very much for giving us this award. Thank you. I'm Miss Della Barnett. Thank you. Thank you, Stella. Thank you, Ronnie. I would like to thank each and every one of you for being here this evening, for being a part of a dream of three young girls, 15. 17, 18, 16, those years in New York City, which is a very big city, we were born and raised here. We had a dream, but with a dream, they need—you need to have people behind you with your dream. For us, my mom knocked on doors when people didn't want to hire and and put under contract three young pretty girls that they said were going to change their minds down the road. I thank you for that. God knows what you've done. But first of all, I would like to say that I would like to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for being in my life and making me who I am today, for saving my life through open heart surgery, for giving me a husband that we're celebrating our 40th anniversary, thank you. for four wonderful children. Make me who I am, for six more than wonderful grandchildren, for the family. Thank you. I love them. Show business is a thing that it, it can be great, but it can be bad too. And I know that's that's really true. And for us, we had a family that gave us a core to help stabilize us in a very、um, difficult, crazy world. It was a fun time. I thank God truly for it. I thank God that I'm here tonight, and that we, as the Ronettes, are being acknowledged for what we gave. But I didn't have any idea what we were giving. I was very, very young, and I didn't know that you know we were setting、uh, styles for girls and and like the Paul Shapers of the world who fell in love. I didn't know that, honestly. But I thank every fan that. Kept us in their hearts and in their minds for all these years. Thank you for playing the music to your children and to your children's children. And for the Ronettes, I say for the unborn children, 
that the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is going to give a, pl a platform for us that down the road, a hundred years from now, they're going to remember us and they're going to remember your generation and they're going to remember your music and they're going to remember what you gave. And for each and every person that helped us to be who we are, I truly thank you. And for anybody I forgot, please forgive me. Thank you. One of music's biggest stars of the 60s has died. Ronnie Spector, the lead singer of the Ronettes, sang such classics as Be My Baby, Baby I Love You, and Walking in the Rain. Spector's look and soaring voice turned the Ronettes into one of the premier acts of the era, touring England with the Rolling Stones, and was the only girl group to tour with the Beatles. Spector died today after a brief battle with cancer. She was 78. What's the recipe for love? One cup of kisses. Two cups of hugs, three foot something of teardrops, stars from above, mix them together, and what have you got? You've got the recipe for love.